It's a bright new day in a lovely new world and we are here with a new chapter in the lovely 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 subject of mathematics. Hello friends, I am Sandeep sir as usual and we are going to learn about polynomials over integers. So let's get the ball rolling and let's start learning. First. Let us understand what a homogeneous equation is. You must be knowing already that homogeneous means same. Now the standard form of a homogeneous equation of degree 1 is in two variables. Let us understand this with the help of an example. The number of people sitting on each elephant is the same which is 3. Now as in this case the total number of people on each elephant are 3. Let us see this separately. The first elephant, 3 ladies. Second elephant, 2 ladies and 1 gent. The third elephant, 1 lady and 2 gents. The fourth elephant, 3 gents. Let ladies be x and gents be y. So the first elephant, 3 ladies, that is x cube. The second elephant, 2 ladies, 1 gent that is x square y. The third elephant, one lady and two gents, that is x y square. And the fourth elephant, three gents, that is y cube. Therefore, the homogeneous equation is x cube plus x square y plus x y square plus y cube. And the degree is 3. The terms may be different but each category has equal number of things. So these types of equations are known as homogeneous equations wherein every term the sum of the powers of the variable are equal and degree of the equation is the sum of the powers of the variable in each term. Let us understand this with the help of another example. Homogeneous equation of degree 1 would be ax plus by. Homogeneous equation of degree 2 would be ax square plus bxy plus cy square. In the above two examples, we can see clearly that in both the cases, the sum of the powers of the variables in each term is the same. These are homogeneous equation of degree 1 and 2 respectively. Now let us see which expressions are known as cyclic expressions. Children, we keep solving each other's problems, don't we? We solve a lot of mathematical problems also. But today, I want you to think about one problem that I have. This one confusion that I have. And this is my confusion. Okay, not don't think otherwise okay this is just a mathematical term that I'm thinking that see this is a chain of pearls so now I want to know which of these pearls is the first and which of these pearls is the last you're getting my problem now you're getting it now see which is the first which is the last I mean I can't understand but this is not a problem this is actually a term in this case we know that these are in cyclic order or in a cyclic way and there is no first and there is no last right therefore um, there are equations where if we replace x by y and y by z and z by x the answer will be the same we will get the same expressions and these expressions are called cyclic expressions Let's now see some examples of cyclic expressions 
to understand them better. For example, x into y plus z plus y into z plus x plus z into x plus y. If we replace x by y, y by z and z by x, we will get the same expressions. So this is a cyclic expression. Let us see whether product of two cyclic expressions is cyclic. Let us take two cyclic expressions x plus y plus z and xy plus yz plus zx. The product of the above cyclic expression is x plus y plus z into xy plus yz plus zx which is equal to x square y plus 3xyz plus zx square plus xy square plus y square z plus yz square plus z square x and this is also cyclic. Therefore, we can see that the product of two cyclic expressions is also cyclic. Similarly, the sum, difference and quotient of two cyclic expressions are also cyclic. Now let us move on to understand what symmetric expressions are. We have a lot of symmetric things in nature. One of the most beautiful examples of symmetry in nature is a butterfly. You can divide this image in the center and see that each side corresponds exactly to each other. Isn't this amazing how pleasing symmetry is to our eyes? Similarly, in a symmetric expression, also if we interchange two things, the equation remains identical. We call this function symmetric. Let us see some examples. x square plus y square is a symmetric function because if we replace x by y, y by x, we get y square plus x square. So equations remain the same and hence this function is symmetric. Now can we say that every symmetric function is also cyclic? Of course we can. Therefore the sum, the difference, the product and the quotient of two symmetric functions is also symmetric. Now that you are aware of these expressions, it is time we learnt about the summation sign and its properties. As we know, a plus x plus b plus y plus c plus z is equal to a plus b plus c plus x plus y plus z. And also, a minus x plus b minus y plus c minus z is equal to a plus b plus c minus x plus y plus z. Therefore, sigma a plus x is equal to sigma a plus sigma x and sigma a minus x is equal to sigma a minus sigma x. In addition and subtraction, the summation sign can be distributed to the individual terms. Now let us check whether summation is distributive over multiplication and division or not. We know that AB plus BC plus CA is equal to sigma AB. But sigma A sigma B is equal to A plus B plus C into A plus B plus C. So sigma AB is not equal to sigma A sigma B. Let us understand this with the help of an example. 3. Different groups of people are standing. In the first group, 3 people have 4 pencils each. In the second group, 2 people have 5 pencils each. In the third group, 7 people have 6 pencils each. So the total number of pencils is 3 into 4 plus 2 into 5 plus 7 into 6 which is 64. But if we multiply the total number of persons with the total number of pencils, then uh, 3 plus 2 plus 7 into 4 plus 5 plus 6 
is equal to 12 into 15 which is equal to 180. Therefore, sigma AB is not equal to sigma A into sigma B. You are learning fast, aren't you? Now, let us learn about the remainder theorem.